All right, so today I have Abiel Acosta here with us today to talk about retirement plans and employers over five employees. So I was shocked to see that employers of just five employees have to go through all of these steps to get set up with a retirement plan. It just seems like such a huge expense for such a small business. And so I wanted to bring Abiel on to talk about what this is, what are the positives, what are the pros and cons of it, what are the options, just in general. Obviously, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor, <laughs> and I'm sure Abiel is going to have some disclosures as well. So welcome, Abiel. Go ahead and um, let us know exactly how long you've been doing this, and, and what's, we'll get into some more specific questions. You got it. Hey, Melissa. Um, yeah, my name is Abel Acosta with Acosta Wealth Management. I've uh, been in the industry since 2005. Uh, before all these mandates even existed, I've seen the, the world change in financial planning and uh, business owner planning and uh, different tax laws and, and different things that have changed over time. So this is one of the new laws that, that began actually in, in uh 2019 that started getting implemented right when we were in the midst of COVID. So I'm happy to share about this. And this isn't financial advice. This is just informing people what, what the laws are. If you have employees, five or five or more. Yeah. So it, it didn't start out with employees of five, right? It was larger employers were mandated to offer a certain level of retirement plan. And then it got trickled down to smaller and smaller organizations, correct? Yeah, and, and maybe just to take a step back, you know, what is it and, and why did CalSaver start, right? So there's actually been a, some, a few different reports. I, I found a report, this was in 2015. This is what kind of helped start this process. This is from the National Institute of Retirement Security. They found that the median retirement account balance of uh, workers uh, age 55 to 64 was about $2,500. Oh, wow. Um, and they found uh, that people just don't save most often because they don't have access to a plan, especially at the workplace. Right. Um, there was a study by Transamerica that I, I had found that they said 89% uh, of workers, when they have access to a retirement plan, they, they contribute, they save. Uh, but 49% of workers without access save. So you can see there's a huge discrepancy. So if you have something available, you can save. If you don't, you don't even know where to put it at. So uh, California is actually not even the first state to do this, to implement. There's been a few other states. Actually, when I first heard about uh, this type of plan, it actually came from a, a client who lives in Oregon. And they were, the first, they, were, they were already experiencing this type of law uh, before it even hit California. But to answer your, uh, your question, it, it's, it started being implemented in phases by the size of your employees. So uh, it was implemented July 1st of 2019. And they, okay. they kind of staggered it. If you had 100 or more employees, 50 or more, and then now five or more. And they just kind of been staggering it since 2020, 2021, 2022. So employers with 100 and more employees, and it, so is that similar? So I'm coming from the health insurance side. So we go to FTEs, you know, full-time equivalents so that employers, even if they have a certain number of part-time, they would still qualify. So do they, how do they define an employee? Is it seasonal? Uh, is it full-time employee? Yeah. So uh, with that, you, you know, just to... Uh, answer that question, the regulation or the law from California doesn't delineate whether you're part-time or full-time. They just want to know if you're an employee, you, this is what qualifies to be under this rule. Okay. So, so it could uh, be part-time, somebody working five hours a week. If you have five employees working five hours a week, you're considered eligible. I, I, I guess so. Yeah, that, that's possible. Well, it's not so much that you have to offer that. So let, let, let's just kind of explain what CalSavers is. Okay. okay. Sorry, go ahead. So it's all right. No, it's a <laughs> retirement savings plan offered by California for those employers that don't offer a retirement plan. Okay. So if you have five or more employees, 
you can choose to offer your own retirement plan, which a lot of people or, or business owners might want as we kind of go through this, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about the pros and cons, but if they, the business owner or a business does not offer a plan, they simply just have to register for CalSAVERS, okay? Right. And they can direct employees' contributions over to this retirement plan that California has, has created in partnership uh, with other companies. Uh, it's a private-public partnership that created this program, okay? So regarding eligibility, this is it. If you're over 18 and you have 30 days of service or you're self-employed, think of those gig workers, uh, this is available to you, okay? Self-employed individuals based in California with 30 days of service or self-employed. So this is contract workers? Contract workers, if they don't have a plan available and they, they don't know where to start or where to save, they, they could use CalSAVERS if they choose to. So it's, it's not a, uh, a requirement that they have to use CalSAVERS. It's more of an opportunity where self-employed individuals, if they choose to use a retirement plan, they, they can use the CalSAVERS program. We're gonna probably talk about different types of plans that exist, that are out there that might be better suited uh, for somebody who's self-employed or even a business owner that has five or more employees, or even a business owner who has two employees for that matter. There, there's other plans that are available um, than CalSAVERS, okay? Okay, so this doesn't have to do with the definition of what they define an employee as. This is just who's eligible to participate in a CalSAVERS program. So even if you're a 1099 self-employed individual who's been doing uh, 1099 service for longer than 30 days, then you can go to CalSAVERS. I'm sure they have a website that you can sign up and put money into this. Correct. And it's, and what would the advantage be? Like, why wouldn't you just go to some other um, company and put money in through a self-directed IRA? Why would you use CalSAVERS? Yeah. So really it's to get the employees to start saving their own money and for their own retirement. Uh, most employees don't even know where, where usually don't even know where to go. There's not a lot of education or even things offered in the workplace. So what it is, just to even describe what CalSAVERS is, it's actually a Roth IRA. Okay. That's all it is. Uh, you, you are automatically, if you're an employee, you start getting your paycheck automatically deducted or aut you're automatically enrolled where money starts going into this Roth IRA. Okay. okay, so there's some there's some things to at least consider pros and cons. A Roth IRA is basically a retirement savings vehicle where money, when it goes in, you don't get any tax breaks, you don't get any tax deductions, but that money grows tax free forever. So yeah. if you accumulate it and you have all this money at retirement, this nice nest egg, you can start withdrawing from there and not increase your, your taxes. Right. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what the limits are with the Roth IRA, it's $6,000 for 2022. And if you're age 50 or more, it's $1,000 extra as a catch-up contribution. So you can put in a total of 7,000, okay? So if, you're, if your employer or an employer chooses not to set up their own plan, they register for CalSAVERS and they have to automatically start uh, putting employees' contributions into this account that CalSAVERS creates for on their behalf, okay? Now, uh, employers don't have to put their own money. Oh. They're just employees' money. So it's not like there's any profit share or any match or any requirement. It might just be a coordination with their payroll company of start de deducting money out of the, their employees' paychecks, okay? So the, the employees are automatically enrolled and they auto-escalate meaning maybe you start at 8% of your pay. Right. So if you make $1,000 a pay period, $80 goes into this Roth IRA, but then the next year it might increase and the following year it could increase. Don't they start you out at an automatic 6% and then go up every year until 
it can mm -hmm. it, it can start there and then it can increase but also employees can just opt out they don't have to do this so they have to go online they have to either go online or they have to call an 800 number to say we want to opt out okay? okay now with loans uh usually people think of loans as being available for retirement and that is the case in 401ks it's not available in, in roth iras okay, okay. Now, there is some issues with having a Roth IRA that's not really discussed uh, in, in this type of uh, situation is Roth IRAs, these are allowed uh, if you make under a certain income, okay? And this is determined by the IRS. California doesn't say you're eligible for a Roth, but IRS makes that determination. Right. So the issue then is if you're a business owner who's making a good income and you're also an employee, you're, you're, you're getting a W-2 wage, it could be that you're deducting your own pay to go into a Roth IRA, but you're not even eligible. California is not going to tell you. It's up to the individual to determine whether they're eligible or not before the IRS uh, uh, has an excise fee for over-contributing. Uh, so there, there are some things where, yes, it might be the, the easiest way to set up a retirement account, but for high income earners or even the business owners who are making high income, it, it, it's going to backfire from the sense of they're going to be ineligible to contribute to a Roth IRA. Yeah, I could see that happening. I could see employers that are flying by the seat of their pants because if you're an employer with five employees, <clears throat> You don't usually have an HR manager, or very few do. Um, they may just be going to the next fire, going from fire to fire, solving problems, <laughs> wearing mm -hmm. multiple hats, and maybe not paying attention to this. So I could see a lot of employers saying, oh, they're going to automatically enroll me, and that way I don't get a penalty, and oh, there's no penalty if I'm automatically enrolled, no big deal. Right. Then the next year, they come from their CPA looking at their tax documents and their CPA saying you have penalties, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they could potentially have penalties if they're not paying attention to this. Well, that, that, that's, that's definitely true. And, and just to uh, highlight the administrative requirements just for those business owners, you mentioned penalties. So first off, employers must register with CalSAVERS to stay in compliance if they don't have their own plan. Okay, so they, if they miss registering, that's something that they have to do. That's why it's really important what you're doing is getting the word out there on this. Right. Now, if they don't do it, now that's what I wanted to mention, just what you just talked about is penalties. So per employee, you have a $250 uh, penalty on the first notice. And then on that second notice, it's going to be $500 per employee. So it's really important that employers this is for profit or nonprofit, by the way, that they have something in place that they choose versus, uh, you know, having to forget about that this CalSAVERS exists, you know, and, right. and it slips under the, the radar, right? I wonder how they're going to be about this. Maybe we could uh, take some experience from the other groups that they've already implemented this on. So the groups of 50 and more and 100 and more. Mm. I know that with ACA with the Affordable Care Act when that came out, they told us that there were going to be fines and these notices were going to go out. It took them, I want to say two years. Oh, it was wow. a long time to get notices out. It took wow. a while for notices to start coming out, for all of the regulation processes to kick in, for all the government agencies to get online and to get those notices out. Have you seen, are they getting notices out in a timely manner about this? You know, that, that's so funny that you bring that up, Melissa. It hasn't even been um, brought up or I haven't seen anything that about compliance or lack of compliance of uh, CalSAVERS. Um, in fact, this was all being implemented during COVID. They had been notifying everybody about this first wave of um, employers that had 100 or more employees. You need to have it done by June 2020, okay? So that was back in 2019. So as COVID was happening, they actually made uh, a, a three-month delay 
in that first uh, requirement. So instead of June 2020, they pushed it back to September. And there had so we don't even know if there's companies out of compliance from September 2020 through through now. Right. Um, the last uh, I guess deadline was June of 2021. So that I'm sure if there's companies out of compliance or employers out of compliance, if things aren't being sent out now, uh, we have no record of knowing that. So you, mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. It could be a while before it's all uh, caught up. And I, I haven't really been seeing any notification of how they ensure compliance, but right. they made it clear, like here are the penalties, but no notice or information as to how to ensure that there is compliance with that. Yeah, okay. But, you know, going going back to that, though, I mean, CalSAVERS is, uh, you know, it is available for those that don't want to set their own plan. And there's some considerations to take into account, right? There's uh, employee attraction and retention, okay? So one thing to consider is that perhaps there are other accounts or another, other types of vehicles that are preferred, especially if you're, if you're a business that wants to attract employees. Yeah, this has been to... a huge topic for us. I mean, employers are, it's very competitive right now. Yeah. And with the minimum wage requirements going up, employers aren't looking to employ the employees that make, you know, 10 bucks an hour. They're looking to employ, they're fighting over the employees that are wanting 17 bucks an hour. They want more out of those, that demographic and they want to be able to win those employees over with flexible hours, flexible work, work at home situations. So employee attraction and retention in the recruitment process has been really, really big for a lot of the employers that I'm, I've been talking to. Yeah. So, you know, what are the other types of plans out there? You know, the popular one that most, uh, if you work for a for-profit company, you've probably heard of a 401k. And a 401k uh, that's available for employees, whether you make a low income or you're the owner, employer, who's also taking a W-2, there's no uh, income limits like there is with the Roth IRA. So you can put more money away in a 401k. You can have it as a tax deduction if you choose. There's also Roth 401ks available. So if you, if you want to do exactly what CalSAVERS is offering, but with more contribution limits, that's available. Um, companies can choose to offer a matching program or profit share. Those are all things that employees do look for when, when they're looking for employers. They're, they're looking for what are the benefits that are offered. So a 401k is kind of what, what most people think of when they think of a retirement plan at the workplace. There's others. There's simple IRAs. There's SEP IRAs. Um, for a nonprofit, you can do 403bs. I mean, there's, there is all these sorts of types of plans. But the idea is, is the plan that's being offered going to help you attract and retain those employees that you're looking for. Yeah. And again, uh, coming from my lens of health insurance with all the Affordable Care Act requirements, employees and individuals were being pushed to or being encouraged to enroll on Covered California. And it was a brand new program. And when I would sign people up, the we had all sorts of issues with billing with customer service they were really hard to get a hold of the billing was really messed up because they were billing they were getting the, the money was going to uh, uh covered california and then covered california was having mm. to pay the carrier and then the communication would have to go back from the carrier to covered california to the member it just became this huge game of telephone that delayed a lot of processes how long has calsavers been around and are we seeing any service issues with people that are in there? Yeah, it just started. We haven't even heard any of those service issues, what's around or what's not. Um, okay. We haven't heard whether or not there's, uh, you know, service issues or hold times. I mean, really, when, I, when you go to look to see how do you register, it tells you, you can email us 
or you can uh, call this 800 number. So we, we don't know what that service is gonna be for employers as well as employees. Their website did have uh, quite a bit of information to, to it's, it appears to make it easy, but in terms of ensuring compliance and ensuring that things are, are done correctly, we just don't know uh, what's been done. But with that too, there's really no education. There's really nothing that's been going on to really uh, assist in um, understanding what is a Roth IRA? How does it work? What are my investment options? Any of those things. Right. So we, we definitely uh, want to explore some of those uh, items with other types of plans that Cal Savers isn't offering. Exactly. And I've been talking to a lot of employers about wellness strategies. And, and when I say the word wellness, everybody thinks of the person sitting cross-legged meditating and tend to think of diet and exercise and meditation. However, part of our wellness wheel includes financial. So part of the financial wellness piece would be educating employees about credit, you know, having good credit oh, good or, yeah. you know, making sure they pay off their credit cards and then taking that money that they paid off their credit cards with and putting it in their 401k or, like you said, educating them on the fact that all the money that goes in their 401k is tax deductible. It's coming out pre-tax. I don't, I know a lot of them, some employees don't even know that piece. So right. like saying the fi- I couldn't imagine setting up a retirement plan without any educational support. Your, your money is being deducted going to this account with all you know is an 800 number or an email address when a website to contact. Right. And uh, just as I was mentioning earlier, I mean, there's contribution limits, $6,000. People may not know that. Employers may not know that. If all you know is I have to auto deduct and send money away into this program, there's no oversight to make sure that uh, they're doing, um, at least they're putting enough or not over contributing not over contributing not, oh neither gosh, does the employee yeah. even know how how would the employee even know and that's that last bullet point that i have on there is really about high income earners like as i mentioned if you're single and you're making over 140,000 or you're married filing jointly and you're making over 208 you're not even eligible to contribute to this plan so yeah. that uh it seems like a high number, and I'm sure in you know certain parts in California, 140,000 for a single person is a lot. But if you're living in San Francisco or you're living in some of some of those more expensive cities, 140 or 208,000, you're, you're you're not making that much more money than than it appears. So, right. uh, but you're ineligible according to the IRS. You shouldn't be putting money into a Roth IRA. Yeah, a lot of their guidelines are looking at federal. Right. And not, they're not looking at New York and California where there are these mm-hmm. higher eight, uh, wage earners and taking into account the cost of living in, let's say, the Bay Area. Right. <laughs> yeah. I exactly. think the poverty level in the Bay Area is 120,000 and under or something like that. Yeah. Some cre- I'm just probably more now with all this housing inflation and rental inflation. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a disconnect and that, that might affect. Uh, if you're just using the easiest method, which is just go to CalSavers. Yeah, and I know I had sent you a list of questions, and one of them was, are there mandates just in California, or is this in other states as well? Yeah, absolutely. There, there are other states. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I had heard first heard about this from clients in Oregon, but there's Connecticut, Massachusetts, Illinois, Washington. Um, there's actually eight other states who have legislation in place that have yet to implement it. So um, from Colorado to Vermont to New York, I mean, there, there's there's a handful. And Are I think it's just this a, low five employees. That just seems really low to me. You know, I don't I don't know what what's all happening with every state in terms of what their requirements are or minimum employee or how, what do they determine to uh, to be an employee for eligibility to your, your question earlier, part-time versus full-time. Um, but I think the, the writing is on the wall that more states might implement this because there, there is a lack 
of savings and retirement. It's almost a, it's a retirement crisis in the sense of uh, baby boomers or those right behind the baby boomers who are getting close to retirement and have, you know, not even a hundred thousand dollars saved or even $50,000 saved. That's, that's scary. So it, it's in a way it's forcing people to save it might not be the best implementation or the best uh, type of plan, but uh, if anything, it's encouraging employers to at least evaluate oh, options. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's the, one of the only powers that they have uh, to go through the business owners, right? Similar to what they did with healthcare yeah. is making sure the, the intention was to make sure that everybody had health insurance. And one of the ways to regulate that was through employers. So mm -hmm. I understand. And then if they already have a retirement plan, they're fine. They just, do they, they still have to go register or no? No, they, they just have to offer something or register. So yeah, okay. if, if they can set one up, there's, uh, as I mentioned, there's multiple types of plans. They just need to offer something. Uh, if you're self-employed, you can look at a 401k for yourself, or you can look at a SEP IRA. If you have employees, if you have a hundred or less employees, there's things such, such as simple IRAs, which are easy to administer, very easy to administer. And it's a simple match that you can offer. 401ks do offer more uh, ability to sock away money for your retirement, especially for those high income earners. 401ks are very attractive. They do cost a little more administratively because it does mm -hmm. follow a different set of, of laws uh, that the Department of Labor and the IRS are kind of both involved in. So, um, so is it setting up plan documents and, and filings that are costing yeah. money? Okay. The 401ks require all that simple IRAs and SEP IRAs. They, they don't need all that. So it makes it a little bit easier. If you're a nonprofit, uh, you can definitely set up something like a 401k. It's called a 403b. And depending on the type of uh, organization that nonprofit is set up, they can either set it up with matching or not. They don't have to. Uh, but again, the requirement is just offer something. Okay. And so... Cal savers, there is no need for any employer matching, correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. But it, with a 401k or 403b, the employer does have to match a certain amount. With the 403b, they, they don't have to match. They, okay. can choose, they can choose not to. With the 401k, it depends on how you want to set up the 401k. The employer has a lot of flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is, um, sometimes reasons to set up a match. Sometimes there's things called like safe Harbor contributions to allow employers to put a lot more away without having to, to worry about if there's not a lot of, uh, participation from their employees. Right. Um, but it comes down to a discrimination testing, right? So there's all these sor sorts of tests with the 401k, right? There's, there's a couple of major two major tests that you have to accomplish and it's all about what you just mentioned is discrimination it can get very technical but the idea is you you want to make sure that your participants your employees are participating as much into the plan uh relative to the high income earners and there, that's what the tests are all around but if that's not a big deal or there is already high participation you can get away with not offering a match so it really comes down to that particular client and their demographics and how they're saving. And that's where it, you do need a little bit more administration and oversight, hence the higher expense to administer. Okay, great. So um, is there anything else that you think we should know about this program? How can people reach you? I am gonna put a link down below for people that have questions, there's a, just a real quick contact form that you can fill out in the link down below or reach out to ABL directly. How can, how can you be reached? Awesome. Yeah. And, and just a couple things just to okay. add, uh, we want to talk about fees with, with this plan, right? There's no fees to the employer. If they do choose to register with Cal Savers, it's the path of least resistance, but also there's some limitations with Cal Savers. Really what the fee is, is to the participant. Their money is being auto-deducted to this Roth IRA that's being administered by uh, this company, 
that's in partnership with California. And for that, they're gonna charge 0.8%. Okay, so what that translates to is for every $100 that you put in there, there's about 80 cents taken away, right? Mm -hmm. And then additional, there's investment fees. There's the, you can get away from investment fees no matter where you go, whether you do it in a 401k, a simple IRA or Cal Savers. The administrative fees, uh, the way I'm looking at them relative to what I've seen for plans that I've set up tend to look, it looks to be on the higher side. And that's just something, uh, it's probably this huge mega plan that California is administering. Uh, and it just is going to be a little bit more costly to those participants. So I just wanted to highlight that, that it could be more costly to an employee, though the employer might not see any of those costs. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, and lastly, I had to show some disclosures. But yes, the I knew those were coming. I'm like, I'm not a financial yeah. advisor. This is not financial advice, but <laughs> ABO, you have your own disclosures here. Yeah, you got it. So yeah, people can reach me at uh, my email or www.acostawealth.com email address, abiel, a -B -I -E -L dot a -C -O -S -T -A, at lfg.com, or they can call my office, 805-973-5909. Awesome. Well, I feel a lot more educated on this. Hopefully people found it valuable. If you like the video, please hit the like button, comment, give us a comment down below and please share the video with anyone that you believe will find it valuable. Thank you again, Abiel. It was a pleasure talking to you as always. Awesome. Appreciate Thank your you, ex Melissa. expertise in this one and uh, we'll see you next time.